of course, we have Cisco here with us. How you doing, Cisco? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing really, really good. I got a chance to sit back and watch the new Netflix documentary about our brother Malcolm X. And um, it was really interesting. A lot of information I did not know. Of course, a lot of information that wasn't provided in public schooling. Um, did you get a chance to watch it? Absolutely. I, uh, I basically binge watched it. I watched uh, probably like the first four or five episodes. I think I think I watched the first four and then the last two. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. So the six part Who Killed Malcolm X aired on Fusion and then it began streaming on Netflix last Friday. And I mean, the information that that one man was able to compile is amazing. That's true investigative, investigative journalism. Yes, and it's yes. Fine. Yes. And it's fine. Mm-hmm. So, and I'll tell you. Go ahead. Well, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say is, you know, those, a lot of those, if you guys really follow independent as investigative journalists, you see this is just a regular dude working a regular job. Um, and, it, and it reminded me of people like um, Steve Coakley and Robert X. These are people that didn't make money off of their uh, research and their investigations. And it's, 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 it's uh, you know, much love to that, that brother. He putting in all that work just to to reveal the truth yeah yeah and this um this is what we mean by research i mean he followed the steps he checked in on people he he showed up places he probably wasn't supposed to be at and he asked right. all the questions that needed to be asked i, I thoroughly enjoyed the documentary now, some of the information in the documentary, like I said, I haven't I've heard of Malcolm X through, you know, my public schooling. And I didn't know some of the stuff that was or some of the details. Could you help me with the El Muhammad, El Elijah Muhammad and their correlation? Well, briefly. Um, Elijah Muhammad uh, was the leader of the Nation of Islam at the time that uh, Malcolm X joined, and he was uh, basically like a, a a prodigy when he joined the Nation of Islam due to the uh, the the rearing that he had when he was in prison by one of the Nation of Islam members that kind of you know, kind of uh, took Malcolm under his wing. So by the time he gets out of prison, he's like a, a progeny and he's, you know, a thoroughbred. He's, you know, out the gates and running full speed ahead. And he and Elijah Muhammad grow uh, an intense relationship, uh, which is depicted in this documentary that created jealousy amongst Elijah Muhammad's children and some of the uh higher ranking ministers in the nation of Islam. So that's pretty much their relationship up until the, uh, you know, that jealousy did grow, but up until the Kennedy assassination, when Elijah Muhammad uh, ordered all the ministers not to speak on the assassination of uh, President Kennedy uh, and Malcolm spoke and said, this is a case of the chickens coming home to roost. And uh, that's what started the the 90-day ban, which started, in my opinion, the um, um, manipulation tactics by um, the alphabet groups, uh, namely the FBI and their COINTELPRO, and uh, obviously through the documentary and some books that I'm going to mention later, this uh, bossy. 
through the New York, which was through the uh, NYPD, New York uh, Police Department. Okay. So as you mentioned, Malcolm spoke up about Kennedy's assassination, got banned. So then we get into the part where it seems like there was a lot of different challenges he was facing. He met up with the boxer Muhammad Ali, and that's where things also started to plummet downhill for Malcolm X and the NOI. See what 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 the documentary talked about, but what they didn't go deep in, and um, I can see his attempt to establish that. Uh, but the Nation of Islam had already been infiltrated. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> the Nation of Islam had already been infiltrated by number one informants and alleged agents, meaning people who are uh, you know, some type of law enforcement officer in the cloak of a Nation of, a Nation of Islam member. And you had paid informants. So and th- and this is this is made clear in the documentary and this is made clear in some books that I'm going to recommend to the LA show audience that if you want to start from ground zero and build your own picture of the Malcolm X assassination I I suggest you read these books um these are the books that I read years and years ago because Malcolm X assassination is something I really really studied I wanted to know just like the Malcolm uh, Martin Luther King assassination and just like the Kennedy, the two Kennedy assassinations. I think if you ever want to study American assassinations, those four assassinations are very key to study and try to understand the mechanics of assassination. But anyway, um, uh, where was I at? I lost my train of thought. You were at, it's all right. You were at the, the situation with um, the oh, NOI. Said, and my right, right. Well, I was talking about the agents. Right, right. So the reason why that's important is because that's the that's when the the manipula- manipulation tactics start to come in play. One thing that was not mentioned um, that you will find in documentation and books uh, is one of uh, Elijah Muhammad's son was working as an agent and he is the one who gave some of this information to Malcolm and I, my personal assessment is because he knew Malcolm would uh, it wouldn't sit right with Malcolm because Malcolm was a, what you would call a true believer and just like many other other members, uh, uh, and you know Elijah Muhammad could do no wrong. Uh, Spike Lee in his his depiction of Malcolm X, he tries to show where Mal- uh, Malcolm is 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 trying to flip flop on this idea about the young girls, uh, the secretaries, and the young girls um, being uh, getting pregnant and this that and the other. Not only that, you had uh, one thing that is in other documentaries and is in, a, in, in books is you had um, they don't mention the role that Louis Farrakhan played. Um, they show his picture in the documentary, but they don't mention him. Uh, Louis Farrakhan was the editor uh, of the uh, Muhammad Speaks, which was the Nation of Islam's newspaper at the time. And they. I think they show like one piece, but there was a campaign during this 90 day ban. There was a strong campaign against the Nation of Islam. You also have the the letters between the the, the letters between the two parties, Elijah Muhammad and uh, Malcolm X, that were allegedly not written by either one of them, but allegedly provided by the FBI. Uh, which was, again, is exacerbating this whole uh, situation to the point that you'll see the interview where Malcolm says, I don't think I'll ever be 
allowed to be a member in the Nation of Islam again. Okay. So that's the, that that that's where you see the the, the turmoil of the 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 relationship. Mhm. So then we get to the I'm wanting to bring up the fire that happened to his house because it seemed like some people were trying to blame it on Malcolm X himself. I thought well, that was Right. Well, you see, Malcolm wanted to stay in that house. The mm-hmm. nation wanted the nation wanted him out of the house. Um, I think it's quite obvious that, you know, Malcolm didn't didn't firebomb his own home. But again, I think these are some of the tactics uh, that were going on. And at the same time, you have to take in, in, in consideration you had, um, as I mentioned in another video about Moss number seven, mm-hmm. uh, if you do like historical research just on the Nation of Islam and mm, I won't mention his name, but there is a book you probably can't find and a documentary that you can't find of a former captain who's in federal custody And this person also has uh, a bounty on their head, guaranteed by an entity I won't name, but it's not any law enforcement. It's guaranteed by a street organization. I'll put it like that. Anyway, that person uh, does an expose on mosque number seven. And basically, it's it's the hitter mosque. It's the gangster mosque. And he actually uh, exposes that there is an underground aspect to the Nation of Islam that is involved in all kinds of different street activities. I'll leave it at that. Um, I'm being vague on purpose just because this is YouTube. Uh, Also, it's not a a subject that you should talk loosely about um, if you if you're intelligent and know how things work. but I know, uh, you know, I, I, I met that person before. Uh, I know that book is out there. It's just probably out of print or something like that. It's going to be hard to find. A lot of those, you know, um, real expose books, they're really hard to find, kind of like um, Spiro Agnew's book. Um, you're not going to find that on the bookshelf. You know, there's books out there that you're just not going to find because they tell too much. And uh, that particular person's book is the one that tells too much. And like I say, there's an active bounty on that person's head. Anyway, mosque number seven, anybody from mosque number seven or anybody from the other mosque could have easily got inspired without the manipulation of the alphabet organizations to go firebomb or even kill Malcolm. That's a, that's a, that is a reality that was depicted in the documentary. Uh, that's just a reality because those uh, staunch believers, that's what they would have done for Elijah Muhammad. Well, I have another thing that I kind of got hung up on, and it was the After the firebombing, it was the, I can't think of it now, tag on it. While you're thinking of that, I'll mention something else. Another person that they failed to mention in the documentary, I don't don't know if he failed to mention it. I don't mean, I don't want to say it like that, but he's very key. And that was Captain Yusuf Shah. He's now deceased, but this is another guy. Even until his death, he had strong hatred for Malcolm X, strong hatred for Malcolm X. And that was another key factor. Uh, I'm not sure if he was out of uh, 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 mosque number seven, but I know he was a very, very key factor in 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 the, uh, the hatred and promoting the hatred towards Malcolm. Well, also, I found out what I was thinking about. <laughs> The FBI and the NYPD, the roles that they played up until 
Malcolm's death, it seemed like they were kind of ping-ponging on whether they wanted to protect him or not. Well, I think it's clear at towards the end in that sixth episode when he gets those documents, it's, it's very clear that the FBI knew, had full, uh, you know, a lot of file, a lot of background information on William X, a.k.a. Al-Mustafa Shabazz. Uh, so, you know, when, when you look at that information today, they, 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 they obviously knew. And it also lets you know that they were willing to take two innocent people and put them in, in prison. Mm-hmm. That is very interesting, to say What's, the least. And then look at the secu- high, high level security detail at his funeral. And look at how the politicians who aren't even Muslim or part of the NOI, look how they get a little antsy and ticklish and when this guy's name is even mentioned. Hmm. That was interesting. That was to me. That was I was really, you know, um, Cory Booker and that lady. I can't remember her name, but yeah, that politician lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get on to the assassination. The morning of his final speech, he got a phone call at his hotel room. Right. right. And he still goes forward with his speech. They also mentioned that two NYPD officers were in a separate room as he was, as he was giving this speech. And right. then all of a sudden there was some type of ruckus in the back. Get your hand out of my pocket. Right. And... One man runs up at first with the shotgun, am I correct? And then the other people came with their handguns. I'm an, I'm a, a not exactly sure about that, so I don't want to confirm okay. or deny. Confirm or deny. I just, you know, yeah, I, I don't want to confirm or deny. But according to the documentary, you know, the shotgun blast is what is what did it yeah which which would lead me to calling out Eugene Roberts as a liar which I've said over the years because this is not the first time I've talked about the Mal- uh, Malcolm X assassination but um I believe just as Muriel McCullough was he's the the confirmer or the person to ensure that this person's in the death process. They might be still alive, but they're in the death process because Malcolm X clearly had a chest wound. And this is a police officer. Eugene Roberts is a police officer. Okay. Working for this uh, bossy task force. uh, And He's clearly given Malcolm mouth to mouth uh, resuscitation, which is something that I would believe that a police officer would be trained not to do. Hmm. You, you you're not, you know, uh, uh, as far as what I've read, you're not supposed to give mouth to mouth to a person with a, a gunshot wound to the chest. Hmm. So you see in the both assassinations, the, the, the agent, which Miriam McCullough is, I don't have to say alleged. And I don't have to say alleged with Eugene Roberts. The two agents are the first to get to the body. You, you guys just keep that in mind. Hmm. Okay. So after this assassination, you know, in front of his daggone kids, in front of his wife, uh, the police just so happened to catch somebody outside of the speech. Right. And they have all that famous footage and um, photographs of him 
being detained in the crowd, like clawing at him, like like mad dogs. I mean, them people were literally really, really trying to get at this guy. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I don't blame him. I mean, you know, the love, that, the respect that you have for Malcolm X, the love that you have for him, you know, come on, man. But... And you also see in that clip the shotgun man put the shotgun on his left side inside of a bag or a newspaper and walk right out of the scene. Yes, that was very, very interesting. I mean, what in the world? It's been how many years? And, you know, what in the world? And then so, look at this. Let me take mm -hmm. you a little, st uh, a little. Let's spin the the years. Look at when I forgot what year that was. The year that Malcolm X's wife, uh, I had that, that was that in the nineties. Uh, um, her house gets caught on fire. And his grandson gets blamed for it. Yes. I read that. And he didn't do it. So that was an attempt to kill her. She's an eyewitness to that assassination. Exactly. Exactly. And then the grandson, the only person alive to carry the name, gets killed in Mexico. And uh, 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 she died. I think she later died as a result of those burns. That was in, I think that was in 1997, around then. Yeah. Yeah, I remember reading that. I'm looking it up now, but you're right. So as far as the men that were detained, it seems like there was maybe some possible fraudulence by the police department. They knew that those men were innocent? Well, yes, I, I believe so. That's crazy. I believe so. But this is the because, world we live in. Because Evan, all the yeah, yeah, it is the world that we live in, unfortunately. Mm. That's that's that is unfortunately the world we live in. Wow. Uh, if you want, I'll share those books with the audience now, if you want. Yeah, you can go ahead. We okay. pretty much wrapped it up. We kind of covered all the points that, you know, really stood out in that documentary. I really appreciated it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so. I know we live in an age where everybody doesn't want to, doesn't like to read. The libraries are getting shut down all through America. I, um, I get it. People want to listen to audio books. I get it. But for those people who do want to read, I don't know if you can find these on audio book, uh, an audio version. But for those people who like to read and really want to get a deeper in, 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 uh, understanding, um of the assassination i for me when i read these kind of books i don't read one book because i don't believe just like me i don't have all the answers everything i say is not going to be right i'm going to be wrong sometimes uh and that's why you want to read the uh a good amount of material to paint a picture uh this documentary helped confirm a lot of stuff that i read and that's why i'm going to name these five books um i'm going to put them in the order uh I, i'm, I'm going to kind of put them in the order these first three uh, is kind of tricky you know uh any one of these first three could be number one um i'm going to start with uh lewis lomax's book it was written in 1968, and it's called To Kill a Black Man. Now, Louis Lomax is interesting because he was going to make a movie, and he was mysteriously killed. He was, uh, his car was uh, in front of some train tracks, and a car came from behind him and ran him into the train. You know how the 
you're waiting for the train, the arm comes down and the train hasn't come. Well, just as the train comes, he gets rammed from behind and he gets killed by the train. So he's never able to do that movie. His The name of his book is called To Kill a Black Man, Louis Lomax, 1968. The next book I'm going to say is The Judas Factor. Some people say this is the best. Carl Evans, 1993. That's a very good book. Um, I really like it. Um, you have Conspiracies by the guy who's in the documentary, Baba Zach Kondo, 1993. You have um, Malcolm X, The Assassination by Michael Friedley, 1992. You have The Assassination of Malcolm X by George Brightman, Herman Porter, and, and Baxter Smith. Um, those are, I would say five books to, to take a look at. Um, like I say, the first three are the, the, I think the most complete and the most, uh, the heaviest of the, uh, out of the five. And, uh, I think if you read that, it'll make, it'll make, it'll give you, uh, uh even a brighter picture to what you saw in that Netflix documentary. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for all your information and, you know, just helping me understand. Like I said, you know, this is the world that we live in, so we have to pay attention to history. You know, history has a crazy way of repeating itself. Please, please go ahead and, you know, check out that documentary and, and let us know what you think down below about Brother Malcolm X. We'll be back with more.